On a bright and clear Sunday morning, volcanologist David Johnston worked from his United States Geological Survey post, just six miles north of Mount St. Helens. Over the previous weeks, teams of volcanologists had warned that an eruption of Mount St. Helens was likely, and most residents near the volcano were evacuated. But on that sunny morning, his measurements showed no change from last month's pattern. Seismic data, rate of bulge movement, sulfur dioxide gas emission, and ground temperature readings were all within range. No measured indications warned of an eruption that morning. And then... The 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens was massively explosive, and it caused great tragedy. 57 people lost their lives. But because of the work of geologists like David Johnston, most people in the surrounding areas were able to have enough time to evacuate to safe places. But not all eruptions are explosive like this. It's true. Some are actually quite mellow. But why are some volcanic eruptions explosive and others just gentle giants? Let's find out. And to do that, let's compare two types of volcanoes. What we're standing on here is what you might think of when you think of a typical volcano. And it's really fun to climb. Mount St. Helens is a stratovolcano, also known as a composite volcano. Now, before this thing blew, it was shaped like a cone. And that has a lot to do with the type of lava that made it. Well, here at Mount St. Helens, it's mostly andestic, didactic, pyroclastic material which basically means that the lava is really thick or viscous. When rocky pieces of the Juan de Fuca plate melted, its silica composition contributed to making very thick magma. When dissolved gases, which are gases like water vapor, carbon dioxide, and various sulfur compounds trapped in magma began to rise and expand, they could not escape gently, kind of like shaking up a soda bottle. The gases built up and caused an explosive eruption. The lava that came out landed near the vent and was so thick it didn't go far, forming the steep walls of the cone shape we recognize as a volcano. So when Mount St. Helens erupted, it was all that gas trapped in such thick magma that made it so explosive. But what makes non-explosive volcanoes so mellow? Well, to answer that, Jonas and I ran away. This is what we were expecting to be hiking on for the next three days. And uh, doesn't doesn't look too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay, cool. And so our journey begins. Now, the mountain behind our tent here is Mauna Kea. Now the Big Island actually has five volcanoes, and the one we're hiking up now is Mauna Loa. Sometimes it's difficult to tell you're hiking up a shield volcano because it slopes so gently and is so massive. And even though we pass sulfur vents, we're not worried it's going to explode. Let us explain. The magma erupting is thin and fluid because it's low in silica and high in iron and magnesium coming from far inside Earth. Because the lava is so thin and flows so far away from the vent before cooling, it creates a gentle slope. And to show you what lava from a shield volcano looks like, we hike down to where Kilauea is erupting. But we made it, I'm so happy. Okay, so we know that some volcanoes are more explosive than others, but where do these fit in on the volcanic explosivity index? This relative index gives a scale from 0 to 8 for a volcano's explosivity. Kilauea, while still dangerous and sometimes putting on a good show, ranks a mere 0 on the explosivity index. As it turns out, the explosive destruction of Mount St. Helens ranks at a level 5 volcano. Now what would a level 8 or mega-colossal volcano do, you ask? It would have a smoke plume 25 kilometers high and spew thousands of cubic kilometers of material. 
could be catastrophic, making ash that could engulf the whole world. It's a good thing those only tend to happen about once in tens of thousands of years. All right. In summary, we've learned that some eruptions are explosive. Yes, but some are not. And that has a lot to do with the thickness of their magma. And how dissolved gases escape from it. True. All right, so here's something for you to try at home. Ask your parent or teacher for permission and build your own volcano as real as you can possibly make it. And then try to push things with different viscosities through it and see how it explodes. And as always, we encourage you to never stop exploring your world. <laughs>